I have a long list of thank yous, and I'm going to see if you're all going to behave and listen to this list without cheering in between. We'll see if you can get this right. Thank you to our honorary Michigan chairman, Governor Rick Snyder, who you just saw. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly. And to our campaign co-chairs, Attorney General Bill Schuette. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader, Randy Richardville. <laughs> Speaker Chase Bolger. I also want to thank our finance chairs. By the way, this really is helpful. The finance chairs, David Fisher and John Ricolta. <laughs> Scott Romney, Lynn Keenan, Ronna Romney, Ronna Romney McDaniel, and other members of the Romney and Davies family, by the way, my family, across the state. I also must recognize our national committee members, Saul Anuzas and Holly Hughes. See if I can get through this. Dave Cam, Fred Upton, Mike Rogers, Dad McConnor, Bill Heisinka, Dan Benishek, um, Tim Wahlberg, and thank you to our wonderful surrogates, Donald Trump. <laughs> Governor Tim Kennedy, Governor Bob McDonald, Governor Chris Christie. <laughs> Famous Oakland County Chair that you love. Um, let's see. Brooks! Brooks Patterson! How can I forget Brooks? <laughs> Representative Eric Nesbitt, former state rep Rocky Ruskowski, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Gary Wolfram, and Attorney General Mike Cox. Listen, this list has been so helpful. I'm sorry to keep going to our state team, Lori Wartz and Bob McComber. I have been going, along with Matt, my son Tag too, we've been going up and down this state all over, from the tip of the tip of the mitt. <laughs> I know, I better be careful. Um, but what what we have seen, what we have seen out there has broken my heart. I love Michigan. I love Michigan. We love you. Yeah. I grew up drinking burners and listening to Tiger Baseball. Yeah. And what we saw when we went across Michigan were families that were hurting, people that were out of jobs, and then the, there's something else, and they, they're so concerned about their children. And the, why, why it is because of the debt that we're going to give to our children. And we have had it. Washington, here we come. We are going to take back America. And we're going to let this guy go. students and, uh, and grandparents and, and they were concerned about what's happening to this great country of ours and I was confident that we could come together today and take a giant step toward a brighter future so tonight their efforts have brought our cause a great victory and we celebrate with people across these states thank you Woo! now tonight is also uh, particularly special for me because this is the place where I was born this is the place uh, where I was raised. My mom and dad lived many years here and love this great state. And uh, I, uh, I know that the Michiganders in this room, we consider you all family. Thank you so much. And in this room are the people 
people who knocked on the doors and made the calls and, uh, and went to the polls, and it made an enormous difference. We didn't win by a lot, but we won by enough, and that's all that counts. <laughs> Special thank you to Governor Jan Brewer there and Senator John McCain. They were tireless, particularly John McCain. He's been all over the country out there. What a hero. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor. They're, they're out there. Uh, we've got two sons out there that are celebrating with them. Great thing about having uh, so many in our family. We can cover almost every race. <laughs> Super Tuesday will be stretched, but we're going to find a way. Our, uh, our campaign, as you know, is about restoring the promise of America. But last week, I, I unveiled a very bold economic plan that's going to jumpstart the economy and, and it's going to get Michiganders back to work. It's going to get Americans more jobs they're crying out for and we're going to have less debt and smaller government and I'm going to deliver on more jobs, less debt and smaller government. We've got to hear that day in and day out. More jobs. people who are saying that if you're running for office, you really can't speak honestly to the American people. Well, we did. And I will. And because this is a decisive moment, I believe this is a time that requires real leadership in our country. The times are tough. We need leaders who will live with integrity, who have the, encourage, have the courage to tell the truth, and have the experience to get our economy back on track. That's the kind of leader I aspire to be. That's the kind of leader I will be if I'm President of the United States. just replacing the president. It's about restoring America's promise. From generation to generation, Americans have always known that the future would be brighter and better. Americans have always believed in a tomorrow full of possibility and prosperity. That's what it means to be the land of opportunity. In America, you know that if you work hard, you can build a better life. If you teach your kids the right kind of values and help them make the right choices in life, you know their future will be prosperous and secure. And that deep confidence of a better tomorrow is the basic promise of America. Today that promise is being threatened by a faltering economy and a failed presidency. Four years ago, we warned that the presidency was no place for on-the-job training. Well, today we have the economy to prove it, all right? <laughs> this president, by the way, he likes to remind us that he inherited an, an economy that was in crisis. But he doesn't like to remind us that he also inherited a Democrat Congress. He had majorities in both the House and the Senate. He was free to pursue any policy he pleased. Did he fix the economy? No. Did he, did he tackle the housing crisis? No. Did he get America back to work? No. No, instead he put us on a path toward debt and deficits and decline. It's time to get off that path and get back on the path of American prosperity. Now these, these days when he's, not, when he's not spending our money or uh, infringing on our rights, he's, uh, he's busy running for re-election. He believes that, uh, do you hear this? He, he believes that he ranks among the top four presidents in American history. I, I, I'd find a different spot for him. Uh, he thinks he deserves a second term. He says, we can't wait, to which I say, oh, yes, we can. Today, we're, uh, we're $15 trillion in debt, and real unemployment stands at 15%. You've, uh, you've heard that old saying about, uh, I need a vacation for my vacation? Well, we need to have a recovery from this so-called recovery. <laughs> well, we, as a nation, we've, we've survived the Great Depression. We've weathered two world wars. We've made it through tough times. And we've not come all this way to give up now. We still believe in the hope, in the dream, and the promise of America. We know our future is better and brighter than these troubled times. That unwavering conviction guides our campaign and this effort. It's rallied millions of people to our cause. And it's the message we're gonna to take to every corner of the country, from Ohio and Idaho to Georgia and Tennessee. We've seen enough of this president over the last three years to know that we don't need another five years of President Obama. Because, uh, you know, he, he, 
thinks he's unchecked by the Constitution. He's unresponsive to the will of our people. And in a second term, he would be unrestrained by the demands of re-election. If there's one thing we can't afford, it's four years of Barack Obama with nothing to answer to. So we're going to get him out of that office and get him back home where he belongs. He's the president. Runaway spending, record debt, they were just the warm up act. You know, for non core, he wants to raise taxes on job creators and small businesses and families. And we are not going to let him do it. Yes. In this campaign, I'm offering a real choice and a very different direction. I have a plan that will restore America's promise through more jobs and less debt and smaller government. President Obama is making the federal government bigger, more burdensome. And bloated. I'll make it simpler, smaller, and smarter, and it's about time for that to happen. If you raise the national debt, I will cut, cap, and balance the budget. If you pass Obamacare, I will repeal Obamacare. We lost, we lost our AAA credit rating, I'll restore our AAA credit rating. He rejected the Keystone Pipeline. I'll get us that oil from Canada that we deserve. And by the way, we're not going to open up our lands for development so we can finally get the energy in this country that we need at a price we can afford. When it, when it comes to the economy, my highest priority will be worrying about your job not worrying about how to save my own. This, this, president, you, you heard, this president wants to raise your taxes. I'm going to cut them. That's going to start with an across-the-board 20% rate cut for every American. I'll also repeal the alternative minimum tax, and we will abolish, finally, the death tax. raising taxes on small businesses and job creators. I'm going to lower those taxes. I'll also lower the corporate rate to larger businesses to 25%. I'll make the R&D tax credit permanent to foster innovation. And I'm going to end the repatriation tax to return investment back to our shores. There's a lot of money offshore that ought to come back to America. Let's finally have a tax plan that puts Americans back to work. And I have it, and we'll get it in place. proposes to raise taxes on savings and investment. And if I'm the president, I'm going to help middle class families save and invest tax free. Yeah, yeah good, I agree. I agree. It's about time. And he also has a, um, an extraordinary gap in his policy proposals. Do you realize after saying that Medicare and Social Security were in trouble, he has yet to offer a single serious proposal for saving Medicare and Social Security. I have a plan to save them both. And unlike him, I have the courage to put my plan on the table for people to see. <laughs> Look, what, what, what this campaign is about, what my plans are about, are creating jobs and raising wages for the American people. They're going to strengthen our entitlement programs for the next generation. And they will not add to our deficit. We will finally balance America's budget. <laughs> having a plan to get our citizens back to work, I have the experience to get our economy back on track. I, I spent 25 years in business. I was also the steward of the Olympics and the, and the leader of a state. I cut taxes 19 times. I've turned a budget shortfall into a surplus. I know how government can kill jobs, and yes, I know how it can help create jobs. And I stand ready to lead our party to victory and our nation back to prosperity. <laughs> in America. 
It's our time for choosing. And this time, we got to get the choice right. I said it before, and I firmly believe it, that this campaign is about saving the soul of America. That this election, this election comes down to two very different visions of America. It's a choice become, between becoming a, a nation of and by Washington, or remaining a nation of and by a free people. A choice between an entitlement society and a land of opportunity. A choice between squandering America's promise and restoring that promise for future generations. If you want to make this election about restoring American greatness, then I hope you'll join us. If you believe that the disappointments of the last few years are a detour and not the destiny for America, then I need your support. I'm asking for you to get out and vote. And I'm asking for you, by the way, to go on, on MittRomney.com and pledge your support in every way possible. I'm, a, I'm asking you to join the fight for our freedom to ensure that tomorrow will be better than today. This election, let's restore America's promise. Let's fight for this country we love. We've got work ahead. We're going to do that work. We're going to take back America. America's the greatest nation in the history of the earth.